Hello, everyone, and welcome. I'm Robert Yonner, curator and registrar for the National Arts Club, and it's my pleasure to be your host as we explore the treasures of numbers 14 and 15 Gramercy Park, the celebrated residence of Governor Samuel Tilden and home to the National Arts Club since 1905. Built in the 1840s as modest yet accommodating townhouses, Tilden had acquired both properties by the 1860s. Over the next four decades, the houses would be dramatically transformed under the knowing talents of architects Griffith Thomas, Calvert Vox, and Charles Rolleston Lamb. The beautiful works of art installed in the interiors are part of the National Arts Club's permanent collection the reward of its Artist Life member program. We begin our visit in the main reception room and east parlor of number 15 Gramercy. These spacious rooms were designed by Griffith Thomas in the 1860s in the Renaissance Revival style and have remained intact up to the present day. The elegance of line and welcoming openness immediately put visitors at ease. Among the treasures to be found in the reception room are Paul Manship's elegantly modern Atalanta. Carl Anderson's Morning, reflecting the decorative impressionism of Americans in France, and William Clausen's symbolist inspired Feeding the Peacocks. Moving into the East Parlor, our attention immediately goes to the magnificent John Lafarge window. These stained glass panels were originally set in the vestibule doors of the main entrance. They were arranged as we see them today as a dividing wall by Charles Rolleston Lamb. Two notable paintings currently installed in the East Parlor are Edward Pothast's Atmospheric Landscape and Roy Brown's Sapin et Peuplier, created during his early years in France. We now move into the rooms of number 14 Gramercy that served exclusively as Tilden's library. The entire concept and design are the work of Calvert Vox. Vox was a great adherent of the emerging aesthetic movement, believing that the best design is found in nature. One of the most striking and defining details of these rooms are the ceilings of satin wood and blue glass, designed by the notable firm of Potier and Steinmetz. On the exquisitely carved mantel, we find Anna Hyatt Huntington's Joan of Arc. One of the most popular paintings in the club's collection is Philip Leslie Hale's White Roses, one of the most important and original of the American Impressionists. We continue through the Tilden Library, now the vibrant bar of the National Arts Club, and arrive under the breathtaking glass dome of Boston artist Donald McDonald. On the walls, we find more American treasures, including works by Halle Lever, Colin Campbell Cooper, and Emil Carlson. Mm -hmm. 
Originally the famous Tilden Dining Room, the Grand Gallery of the National Arts Club is one of the largest exhibition spaces outside a museum in Manhattan. In the past decade, the gallery has hosted solo exhibitions of Goya, Andy Warhol, Edvard Munch, Picasso, Carlos Quintana, Lois Dodd, and Kyle Staver, among others. Our current show is the 2020 Exhibiting Artist Members Exhibition, a tribute to Everett Raymond Kinsler from his NAC colleagues. Also included are works by Artist Life members Lois Dodd, Kendall Shaw, and Ilya and Emilia Kavakov. We end our visit in the portrait room, originally the main entrance and vestibule of number 15. This is a favorite space of guests and members alike. The walls are adorned with portraits of National Arts Club Medal of Honor recipients, most of them the work of the renowned portrait artist Everett Raymond Kinsler. Currently highlighted are some of the most important names in modern literature and music, including Tennessee Williams, Saul Bellow, Salman Rushdie, Leonard Bernstein, Isaac Stern, and Dave Brubeck. Thank you all for being with us today. And on behalf of the President, the Board of Governors, and the membership of the National Arts Club, I extend a warm invitation to all of you to join us in person soon. Thank you.